Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, as you may remember, um, a couple of episodes ago, I had a, I parked the tractor up because we had a the radiator lo- hose was leaking. Um, I've now finally got round to repairing it because I'm going to need the tractor fairly soon for lots of jobs. So, uh, yeah, I'll show you what I'm going to do. Okay, so all we're going to do is get this ratchet on this screw and undo it. Um, simple stuff, yeah. So once it's unscrewed, it uh, should be loose, we can pull this off. Oh, and have some lovely rusty water coming out. Mmm, not good. So, I think if I take this clip off, I'm pretty sure I'll show you where the, where the leak is. Yeah, so it's a bit tricky getting it off with one hand. Hang on. So, what's happened is, um, I thought it, it was uh, split on one of these where the clamp is, yeah? But I can't find any splits, I can't find anything wrong. Which is a bit, uh, which is a bit weird, to be honest. So what I'm going to do is cut this piece off on this line, on this joint line here. Yeah, and then re put it, put it back on the, there. I mean, everything looks a bit slowly rotting away because it is, because it's an old tractor. Um... Yeah, I'm going to cut it here, put it back on, re-put the clamp back on and uh, see if that helps. Um, so there it is cut off. So I'll re-put this back on here, somehow. Yeah, and just move the clamp in further. Uh, and then do it back up. And then fill it with water and test it. So. Don't overdo it, but... Uh, Pipe back on, a little bit shorter now, as you can see, this bit was, it's gone all rubbery and horrible, so we'll, uh, it's back on there, let's, let's see what it's like when we fill it back up with water. <coughs> so there we go, there's a radiator, um, cap, I've just took the cap off, so a few other things that need doing on here, I've just noticed the, uh, injector return pipe to the tank. It's missing. <laughs> it's gone completely. And a few other little things that need uh, touching up on this baby. But for the minute, let's get some water in there. So there we go. Filled with water. Coming at the overflow now. Um, there is no thermostat or... No thermostat, no water pump on this particular 1976 model. <laughs> but um, So it's just done on the thermal... Basically it's done on the principle that when the water gets hot, it rises to the top of the, through the engine, yeah, and it gets cooled. And the cooler water runs in the bottom of the engine, and it circulates on its own. <sighs> Best of luck with that. It, um, it doesn't like it too much in the summer, so we we are probably looking for another water-cooled uh, tractor, maybe a bit bigger. I didn't turn the diesel on. Oh dear. What now? Come on, baby. I'm gonna have to bleed it now. So, a few more repairs on the tractor. As you can see, there's a crack in the oil filter housing. Uh, so I've scraped it out with the edge of a Stanley knife. I've um, now applied some, cleaned it all up as best I could. It's a really old filter, as you can see. But uh, clean, so you can see the crack there. 
uh, cleaned it up and then I've applied some super fast setting uh, epoxy resin um, like um, Araldite you might say yeah so so this stuff it's a two pack mix equal equal measures uh, mixed it up and then and then spread it over there it should be dry in five minutes and I'll be able to reassemble it and start the tractor up and see if we've got a leak so uh, filter back on filled with diesel and uh, no leaks yet pumps running I'll give it a bit of heat uh, put the throttle on make sure it's in neutral obviously and uh, see if you'll start So now we've, um, we've got the tractor repaired. I've brought him into it, brought her, her, uh, into Max's paddock, and we're going to trim under the olive trees uh, in preparation for harvesting. So there we go, uh, no water leaks and no fuel leaks, but I have noticed this is only half full, yeah, so what do you think, yeah, only half full so I'm going to have to bleed it, re-bleed it I think, it's running okay, isn't it, hey, yeah, uh, the bits left underneath the trees so I'm going to have to uh, use a strimmer, I don't want to get too close to the tractor and, and damage the bark of the tree so I'll just trim the rest of the bits but yeah that's fairly good now and uh, this bottom section I've just got these two top little bits to do easy, look how many olives are on this tree just a tiny little tree cool and this is uh, so those were Galega, these are Cordeville, and a lot of these, because we don't spray for the uh, olive fly, so a lot of these have been, as you can see, bitten by the fly. Yeah, but uh, there, look. But they'll be okay, they're okay for oil. And look at else I've discovered. Cool. Okay, Max, we've got to go now. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Change of scenery this morning. I've come bearing gifts. 
uh, stuff I'd forgotten to give these guys, and you know who these guys are by now. Hang on. It's Carissa, Ewan, and Ewan's mum. All the way from Welsh Wales. Welsh Wales. <laughs> and we're having a spot of tea before we start making holes in walls and things like that. So, yeah, cool. And we're seeing which uh, which power bank is better. <laughs> it's a big competition. So here we are at Frankie Off Grids. There's the stove we're going to fit today. I've had to drill a few. Uh, drill these bolts out in the back here. So this is loose so I can slip this underneath there. I've got to cut a little slot with a grinder so it goes over this keyway for the... For the um, Oh, what's it called? Uh, yeah, for this thing. So I've got to cut a sleeve out, so cut a keyway in the top for that to fit, and then we can screw that together and then put it up on the plinth. Well, away we go. Oh, I can see the sky. Yeah. Yay. Break. Keep going now. Yeah. <laughs> Who's that there? Is that there's somebody filming us? <laughs> so there we go. Fitted. Uh, just in time for lunch, ideal. Um, we've had a little test fire, oh, it draws really well, so all we've got to do now after lunch is fill that in and that's it, job done. Happy? Thanks, Uncle Nick. <laughs> Very happy. So there we are, cemented in on the back. Uh, lots of Feb mix to make it flexible and then I've got a sort of temporary arrangement here only because uh, I've <laughs> put a tie around there and these fixings uh, well Ewan didn't have the correct fixing so I'll bring some down next time I come but at the moment this is really really secure so there we go so there we are um, fireplace well didn't take a lot to fit the fireplace, but the chimney done. Uh, just need that to dry now. Should be fine. Then clean up the bits and pieces. Yeah, and we've already lit the fire uh, to see if it draws through the chimney well enough. So all good. Lovely. Happy. Very happy. Cool. Okay, everyone. So from you and Chris's. Lovely little new fireplace fitted. Back home to the uh, office room. And I just wanted to show you a few tips about uh, laying tongue and groove, as you can see behind me, tongue and groove flooring. Sorry it's a bit echoey, but um, yeah, this isn't going to last very long because uh, I need to go and help Ange. So here goes. Um, as you can see, I've put some nails in here and here. These nails <laughs> correspond with where the beams are, so I don't need to put a nail here because there's a joint in the boards, yeah? So there's a nail here and a nail there. Yeah? So basically, I'm just going to hook a, um, so you can see it, hook a string line. Uh, sorry, not a string line, a chalk line. <coughs> over that and we're gonna take it all the way down here Oop. so as you can see it lines up with the nails here the screws here into the beam yeah and I'm gonna flick a line across there so that um, I know where to fix the nails yeah I don't need to do it here because like I said there's a joint in the beam, so let's flick this line. Hang on. <coughs> so, to flick the line, all we need to do is obviously have the chalk line and put it fairly tight over the line of those screws there, and then we'll just flick it, and that gives us a nice blue line, as you can see where we need to screw the nails to. And I'll just do the other one, two, three, and then show you the rest. Right.
So as you can see, I've cheated a bit, only because I have one. I've set up my uh, laser line and level machine. And I've cast the laser along this edge, which goes along exactly along this edge of here. Uh, and obviously up the wall and everywhere else. But the reason for this is I need to measure off this line. Yeah. I need to measure off the line to the back wall to see if the back wall is square with this front wall. Yeah, and I don't believe it is because these lines, as you can see here, these lines aren't a right angle. This should be over here somewhere. So I believe that that wall isn't square with the wall behind me. So let's have a look. And just to re-explain that, I've drawn a little drawing here. Uh, so these are the side walls of the house, which are parallel to each other. These are the, say, room dividing walls, if you like, which are parallel to each other. But what's happened is, when it was built, these angles in the corners aren't right angles. They're, so realistically, this wall should be down here somewhere. Yeah, this is why the floorboards look a bit, not the floorboards, but the... The boards I have down now look a bit funny. This this wall, this end of it should be down here to make it square. Yeah, hope that makes sense. In fact, something I can demonstrate on the laser, if I switch it to casting another beam and move it back over here. Yeah. Let's run it just beside that. Great. I'll do it that way instead. Yeah, so if I run that back on the same line, oh, over there, so we're along this edge here, and we're on that edge over there, just I need to go a little bit more, you know, there, yeah, so then this edge of this board should be, if it's 90 degrees, which these red laser lines are, yeah, uh, the edge of this board should run square to that, and as you can see, the joint goes further and further apart as we get further up there until we're about 50 60 mil difference up there so yeah so i'm not nailing these uh, boards down i'm using screws and basically i'm going through the make sure this one's lined up correctly yet yeah. through the top of the tongue like so put them in at Forty-five degrees, yeah. Because what I'm aiming to do is screw through this board, which is only thin, to the joist below. So um, this will be nice and firm then. So these aren't exactly the right. Hang on. Yeah. So these aren't exactly the right screws I was looking for, but. They're, they're near it because they have a very small head, yeah, so I can screw into, uh, as you saw, I can screw into the, the timber, like so, and the head gets lost, but by having, oh, it's too close now. But, by having as a slightly bigger head than what I needed on the screw it means that they are fixed down really well so as is uh, standard practice with um, putting down natural wood flooring you leave a gap around the edge I haven't left a gap here because this has movement anyway so I'm not particularly worried There's, I've made a bigger gap there but this this is flexible so I'm, I'm okay with that but this is plasterboard wall so I've left a gap, probably 10 mil on both ends to lay for expansion, etc. Yeah. Although the boards will expand more this way than they will that way, still uh, leaving a gap is a bit wise, or else they'll all pop off and uh, yeah, you'll have a bit of a mess. So on that end now, I need to cut one uh, to finish this first plank off. Cut one and fit in there with a 10 mil gap on the end, and then we can just carry on staggering them so I'll have the other cut will be this end etc etc as we go through until we've laid the whole floor but unfortunately you won't be seeing that until 
Yeah, so, but unfortunately you won't be seeing that until next uh, Tuesday. Hope I got my days right. Next Tuesday because um, we're running out of time and I've got to go and see what Angie's doing in the kitchen. Buttery biscuit base. Ooh. Right, we are. Nos temos. Nos temos. Nos temos. <laughs> That's about as far as it goes at the moment. Ah, buttery biscuit base. Buttery biscuit base. So what's in the pan? There is some crumbed biscuits. Right. Um, I've got, there's actually 20 biscuits crumbed up. Um, that's about 400 grams. That's oatmeal digestives or something like that, yeah? Something like that, yeah. yeah. So into that I'm putting some melted butter. How much? About 150 grams. Okay. So, and the good thing... At the moment, butter is prices for butter is all over the place. I'm sure most people realise the cost of stuff is going bizarrely all over the place. And at the moment, getting the butter in these little tubs works out quite a good price, as far as butter is concerned. Which also means then, if I need melted butter, I can put it straight into the microwave. Hey. So that also means then we have little tubs for either nick to put things in or... Screws. Or, yeah, little screw holders or just knickknacks or plants, you know, put holes in the bottom. Mm -hmm. Always good to have plant tubs. It's very so. frugal. I oh, know, I do like to be. So at the moment I'm just mixing that together. And because I'm pre-melted the butter, I'm not actually heating this through because it will go into the oven in a moment. So I'm just making it all nice and blended together. Well, isn't this like you've done on the key lime pie? It's exactly the same as the key lime pie base. Ah, it's just but you really... haven't even told us what you're making. No, it's a secret. It's not a secret, surely. Go on, tell us. It's a version. Oh, a version. A version of treacle tart. Oh, it's <laughs> treacle tart with a... Buttery biscuit base. Because my sister and brother-in-law bought over a few tubs of this. Tubs? Tins. Tins, yeah. Cool. And what's quite handy, these are the 454 gram tins. I need about 400 to for my treacle tart. <gasps> so uh, you can never get it all out really easily. So that'll be about 400 will go into this one. So in the meantime, this little beauty goes in here. And again, clean everything out. We're not Nigella here. Telling me. <laughs> oh yeah, but if I was, I'd have lots of KPs cleaning up after me. You see, True, that's yeah. the difference. Yeah. Right, so what I'll do, I'll just go and get a normal spoon and squash that down a minute. Squishing. Yeah, it's looking good though. It's looking pretty good, isn't it? So, with that all nicely squashed down, a little bit there to tap in. We're going to put this in the oven. It's on quite a low temperature at the moment, 150, 160. Don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but I'm sure we'll tell you. So that goes in for about 10 minutes or so, like so. And in the meantime, I can get the rest of the... Um, what's it called? Tarty part. Tarty part. Tarty parts. Tarty part prepared. I've bread crumbed up. It's about 120 grams of, and it's our own sourdough bread. Ooh. So it should. Uh, featured in a previous episode. It featured in, yeah. I've just shook all the uh, big lumps to the top. Yeah, I see that. But uh, that's all right. Um, I've got two lightly beaten eggs. Into that, I'm going to put all this in together, along with my tin of treacle. We call this treacle, I've no idea actually, I'm just thinking about this, it's treacle tart and it's actually golden syrup. Yes, but see the thing is, I know I know something about this, I think I, I think I know something about this. Lyle's golden syrup, mm -hmm. yeah, Lyle's used to, they originally made treacle. Yes. So whether there's yeah, been Yeah, but that's a, black treacle. Yes, very true, but whether there's, it's been a... Um, misconstrued over the years so anything that says Lars on it is going to be treacle is that maybe no they do sugar huh 
Don't they? They do you get normal sugar. No, that's them. Tate and Lyle. Yeah, I'm sure it's his brother. No, I uh, <laughs> could well be. So, I'm putting in a lemon. Now, our lemons at the moment aren't quite yellow. They're over fresh. They're very fresh. So, this literally is about 10 minutes off the tree. <laughs> so, uh, I was thinking about putting a lime in it, but no. It's the flavour. It's the flavour, love. Flavor. So, I'm going to cut them in half. So, see, it is. Although, you do get limes that look like that. As well. I'm going to juice them up. Got lots of pips in Yes, that's the problem with our big lemon tree. We yeah. have lots and lots of pips, but there you go. But that's okay. Just thought I should have zested it first, really, shouldn't I? It would have made sense. Yes, yeah, so i <laughs> <laughs> Right, so I'll zest this half before juicing, so hopefully it'll make it a little bit easier. What, why, why didn't you zest it when it was cold? Because oh, I get all confused on camera. Oh, stress. <laughs> Flustered. She can be a right diva sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want some of this treacle tart? Oh yes. Or you better be able to some. Now I'm going to put in a little bit of uh, ground ginger as well. Um, what is that ginger that comes out the ground? Actually, no, I think we, I'm going to have a quick look at in the fridge, see if we've got any fresh ginger. We do. We do, oh, that's right, right then. Ooh. I'll put a little bit of fresh ginger in as well. Now, zested and uh, juice is going in as well. Any pips? <coughs> pips. Got a little bit of ginger, so he's going in too. Gingibre. Gingibre. She says, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, it'll just stick on the back of the thing. Yeah. Though. I'll get it squished up enough. It's just to give it a little bit of zing. Try not to get nails in it. <laughs> there we go, that'll do. Let's have a little bit there. Right, so that's just come out of the oven, so I'll get, let that cool down for a little bit while uh, we make up the middle. The topping, I should say now. Right, this is going to be the fun bit, trying to get as much of this syrup out. I can help you. I know you could help. It's just such messy stuff. I'm just going to tip it in. <laughs> <laughs> so like I said, these are 454 gram tins and I want about 400, so... It looks like nothing's happening. Really? Yeah, you can see, oh, you can see it now, yeah. <laughs> it's just... Mind you, if you look at that, I am... Mm -mm -mm -mm. So again, I'm not going to uh, weigh an exact amount because golden syrup is a nightmare to uh, to get anything in and out properly. Generally, isn't it? So yeah, there's a, a bit left. Enough, enough, for, enough for me to. to no, it's a bit yeah. too much for me to, to uh, scoop. Oh yeah, that's. Right. I've said there's forty nine point eight grams left in oh, there. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Right, I've made a right mess here. I've left all the utensils in the pot, haven't I? Good girl. <laughs> right. So now I'm going to put in the breadcrumbs into this, like so. And give it a good mix. Um, I, I just on a, on, a, on a quick note, those of you who have never had treacle tart before, you have to do this recipe. <laughs> it is just 
I could eat this all the time. <laughs> right. Now the fun bit, I need to get this onto there. Easy. Well, even when it's hot, it doesn't really matter. No, because it's going to get cooked again anyway. Mm -hmm. It's very beige. <laughs> no, it's golden. Oh, sorry. Golden, golden, not beige. Spatula is a bit too bendy for this. Mm. I'm not too keen on that one. No, no. it's not your favourite spatula. Not my favourite spatula, no. I must say. <laughs> so, what's your favourite cooking utensil? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, answers in the comments, please. Can't go wrong with a good slotted spoon. Hmm. Not much good for what you're doing. Though. No, that's very true. Yeah, I need a bit of a stiffer spatula than I'm using at the moment. Mm -hmm. This end keeps bending over. Better check that bowl in a minute. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's have a look here. He's such a child. So again, as you can see, this is another really healthy, low calorie. Yeah, we don't do them very often. At least once a week. <laughs> well, only once a week. That's just like, you know, just one treat a week is hardly anything, is it? No, that's true. Right, so that's going back into the oven for about 35 to 45 minutes. So, see you in a bit. Okay, the moment of truth. Moment of truth. Right, it's a little bit caught around the edges, but that's probably because I haven't done an actual pie crust, so the base wouldn't have come up around the edges, but that doesn't look too bad to me. Just give it a little. Nice, and it's smelling lovely. So, yeah. that'll mm. be a little treat. Wow, so is that need cooling now before yes. I can eat it? I can't just yes. put my finger you can't, No, don't. Oh, okay. Thank you, darling. <laughs> so, while the tart is cooling... Not me. <laughs> we'll, say, we'll say goodbye to you guys, and uh, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for your likes and subscribes and for ringing that little notification bell. Ding, ding. And um, we'll see you in the next one, which could be quite interesting. Maybe. Maybe. Well, you'll finish something. Maybe I'll finish something. Maybe we'll do uh, a prelude to the olive harvest, uh, which may well happen. We, we need to show you... You've got a bit of uh, preparation to do before. Prep to yes. do for that. Uh, also, we'll explain how the olive harvest is going to happen before we actually do it. Um, we'll also explain... Uh, uh, we might actually start Luke and Sarah's engine. You never know. A lot of work to do before I start putting the crack shaft and things in, but all good. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, see you in the next one. Bye! Bye. Okay, so here it is, cooled down, cool, oh, that's me pushing that, cooled down, out of the oven, and looking very tarty and very treacly. What, this or me? <laughs> Both. How big a piece? No, again, just a little piece, it's just way, way, it's past my bedtime now. Yep. <laughs> I thought the first one's always going to be a bit of a... Oh, I'm not sure about this. Mm, let's have a look. Oh, it's horrible. Hmm? It's horrible. Oh, well, good idea. Mm, mm. Mm, mm, that works.
Mm. Well, yeah, definitely good, eh, guys? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I think so, but I made it. <laughs> um, 